what's up guys this is Ronnie welcome back to tutorial 86 and today I will show you guys how to load CSV file inside uh, cipher console using epoch procedure and python so in the first part of this tutorial we will see uh, general cipher query and epoch procedure to load the csv file and in the second part we will see how to do the same thing using python so definitely within the python we will be going to use the same cipher query but definitely we will be uh, using python okay so these are the simple csv file uh, in actual uh, case i'll be going to show you guys the full csv file but i'm just giving you the example of what data i am having so i have a three column actually a three header train name station and count and these data are going to be replaced uh, sorry display in like this way so train name is train name and the station will be given as this list kind of a thing and each element in the list will be itself a dictionary like name will be the name of the station and uh, value will be the value of the station and the count will be the uh, each train is going to uh, contain some station or goes to some station that count will be here so for example this train goes to this many uh, stations so that is why the count is 14 so all together inside the list there are 14 dictionary so we'll be going to uh, i'm not going to do all this uh, detail analysis in this video for that we have a, we have some advanced or intermediate uh, use cases in later on we'll be going to do that but first objective is to uh, understand how to load json file how to do some sort of advanced parsing operation map iteration from your json that part is completed now i'll, I'll be going to do the same thing from csp we'll see how many use cases we can uh, like create for csp so once csp and json is completely done you guys are uh, like you guys feel comfortable then we'll uh, gradually start doing the um, some advanced uh, like use cases like uh, converting the csv file into uh, JS, uh, graph or json to csv multiple json multiple csv doing some correlation all those use cases will be done in the later part so the again the use case objective is going to be how to load the csv file in neo4j uh, cipher using epoch procedure and these are the prerequisite if someone is watching this video for the first time for them it will be really new so guys please go ahead and watch for uh, from the tutorial 75 you will get the complete like tutorial i actually explain this thing and also i uh, uh, demonstrate everything but in a nutshell you have to co copy uh, paste this line into your new from your new 4j okay first you go to your new 4j browser then go to settings tab then copy paste this two line and uh, hit enter and apply and it will ask you to restart your new 4j browser client and you have to uh, means uh, continue and okay and after that your job is done but if you do not follow this thing and try to write the code uh, means if you are trying to load the epoch procedure or execute the epoch procedure it will definitely throw an error so whenever you are getting some error that you have you have not configured this thing just try to remember these two things okay so that that is why i'm always uh, do this thing so this is the uh, like uh, code i have written already if you see here so uh, let me just remove this thing uh, so it will be easier to understand for all of you okay so just wait so let me open my new 4j but before i open the new 4j browser let me show you guys the csv file so this is a csv file output.csv if you see here three header and each header is going to contain some uh, like name train is going to having the name uh, station uh, sorry train name station train name is going to normal string station name is going to be represented in the form of list and if every element in the list is actually a dictionary then count is one like this okay so let me open this thing from here okay so it should be call then epoch dot load dot csv then i have to write the file url okay so it should be file okay then it should be users then ronnie then output.csv okay and same thing like json we have to use yield but here the attributes are different so it should be line number so it is going to represent all line number then map and list so map is going to uh, formulate the csv each and every uh, like csv line in the form of dictionary and list is going to formulate each and every line of the csv in the form of list so that will be really interesting you will be able to understand this thing now see so this is a line number this is the map map form of the our first line so what is the map form of our first line let me open this thing in text edit so our first line is this one acs is the train name and this is so if you see here i got the same thing in the form of map so station is going to be represented in the form of dictionary here right 
so whole thing is actually a dictionary means map and station is the header name and this is going to be represented as a list cause in the file also we have the same thing count is count is also key and train name is going to be represent plain like this and for list everything will be represented in the form of list so now you will understand you'll be able to understand how powerful is epoch so depending on your requirement you can either choose map or list so you can't uh, like differentiate the advantage and disadvantages of using list and map depending on your requirement your situation uh, either you have to use list or map so gradually we understand when you should use map and when you should use list we will going to discuss all this thing in the later part okay so that is one thing and that's it for cipher from cipher actually let me just copy this thing here okay so now i think i should uh, put this thing done okay so now i'll be going to write the same thing from python okay so let me open my python console sorry neo4j this is not neo4j this is jupyter notebook so what will write tutorial 86 and then how to load json files in neo4j using cipher epoch and python okay that's it and once this is done we'll create some cells and let's write down this thing from neo4j import graph database sorry graph database then it should be driver equals to graph database dot driver okay and it should be uri and it should be auth and it should be like this so i'll be going to write down the username here and after that the password again uh, don't try to use the same user id password uh, uh, the way i'm giving the password and user id this is not the right way but just for sake of understanding and just I, i'm not going to uh, like i just want to create everything simplistic for all of you so i'm just keeping everything uh, like uh, very simple but in the real case or real world scenario when we are going to work some production ready project try to use some sort of config file some sort of environment variable and ask your admin to change the password periodically so definitely it will be part of the privilege access management if your company is having like a global uh, like uh, cyber security program in place okay so uri is going to be i'll copy paste from here so from bold okay and like this and after that session is going to be driver dot session so this thing these things are actually uh, same for all the tutorials and probably i'm doing this thing for last one year so hopefully all of you are familiar with this thing now so i got some error not sure why so bolt is like this let's see some error uh, what it's saying message connection initialized security unauthorized uh, connection initial self metadata let me check where actually the error okay i just gave the wrong password that's why okay authorization fails everything is fine so if you give uh, some invalid password this also happens so now we'll be going to copy this thing from here okay same query actually okay then execute this thing then results equals to sessions dot run q1 dot data okay what happened uh, by mistake i actually uh, close everything so let me run this thing again uh, let me run this thing again so now i will iterate through this thing for row in results print row okay see i got the same thing and like this is for this is for line zero this is for line one this is for line two like this way we got everything okay so there is another way of doing this thing so the results is complete list so if you write results zero you will get the first element see i got the first element in this way you can results one you will get the second element like this so this is very simple okay so what i'll do i'll just try to copy not copy just taking 
taking a screenshot okay and after that try to um, i'll be trying to put this thing here okay so now you guys understand this is very simple very easy to like load json sorry load csv file and in the later on in the next part we will see how to do some sort of advanced operation from here okay and in between i'll uh, highly recommend you guys to do some sort of practice so that it will actually give you some additional confidence that uh, you also can do by your own and just don't try to watch uh, my videos blindly it means you definitely watch my videos but after watching my videos try to do some sort of practice by your own write your own code try to visualize all the use cases try to come up with new use cases try to do some sort of practice and in between you are having any doubt or clarification required please feel free to ask me i'll try to answer your question but if you do not do the practice or if you do not write your own code by your own then actually will eventually forget after some time okay so that is why just try to put some time on your like actual coding or actual practice okay so next thing is that the this thing so maybe i can uh, i'm not sure how to do this thing maybe yes this is fine okay so in the next tutorial we'll see how to do some sort of advanced cipher queries or advanced operation from uh, csv file using epoch like after loading the csv data what are the different uh, advanced operation we can do and once this is done we'll try to do some sort of correlation between multiple csv file and once this is that is done as well so we'll try to uh, uh, do something actual means you can understand that uh, if your objective is only loading the file then why you should use neo4j you could have uh, chose something else like normal python can do that you can either use jupyter notebook or any other things like there are multiple millions uh, sort of tools are available which can help you to load the csv file but why neo4j like why you are going to use epoch procedure to load G, uh, like csv file if your on objective is only loading the data no after loading the data you have to uh, convert this thing in the form of graph and the after converting this from the graph you have to uh, like come up with some sort of intelligent decision strategic decision for your business for your company for your client you have to uh, identify some anomaly you have to identify some risk within the system you have to identify some patterns or you have to classify some patterns of the user behavior you have to you have to uh, like do some sort of cyber security threat hunting threat vector analysis some risk mitigation many things for that you have to convert the csv in the form of graph so how to convert the csv in the form of graph is the actual like use case for our next upcoming uh, four or five tutorials we'll be going to see that okay so that's it guys enough of talking but uh, if you have any other use case which you want me to cover please feel free to write me and apart from that if you are having any suggestion feedback or complaint regarding your complaint please feel free to write back to me i always try to uh, like uh, uh, improve our quality and feedback is also important for us so that's it guys we'll see you in the next video till then take care goodbye